Welcome to Aging Well in America. I'm Anne Marie Guattari. Before we get started, I'd like to say thank you to Fran Schoenenberg, who has done this show for well over 20 years. Fran has been very active in the community and has done a lot for our seniors, so thank you to Fran. We all know the numbers. Every year, 7,000, excuse me, that's every day, not every year, every day, 7,000 people in the United States turn 65. In the last 10 years, those numbered 85 and older will be, uh, has doubled, doubled to 6 million people. By the year 2050, we will have 20 million people in the United States will be 85 years and older. So what are we doing? Are we ready? There is a lot of really good work going on around the country around the world, and we have some of the very best research going on right here in our own backyard at Wayne State University's Institute of Gerontology. Today we have with us Dr. Kathy Lysak, the de Deputy Director of the Institute, and she's going to talk to us about some of her most recent research on what she calls downsizing. But before we s start talking about that piece of research, we're going to ask Kathy to tell us a little bit about the industry in general and some of the overall issues facing. So, Dr. Lysak, thank you for joining us. Thank and you. Give us an overall picture of what's going on in this so-called aging community. Well, you're right, we're all getting older, um, but as a population, the oldest segment of the population is expanding. You know, our lifespans are longer. Um, families are having fewer children. So as the decades have rolled out over the last two decades, and three decades in particular, um, the, the piece of the pie that is ours, mm -hmm. um, us aging boomers are becoming older mm -hmm. and older. So society is responding. Service providers are aware of this trend. Products are being sold to us. Mm -hmm. um, Educational institutions like universities are preparing healthcare professionals in larger mm -hmm. numbers, mm -hmm. nursing, rehabilitation, etc. Um, governments are aware. We hear debates about Social Security. We hear uh, discussions all the time, um, particularly since 2008, around the adequacy of pensions and what resources sure. will be there as we age. So I think it's a societal moment. Yes. Um, people who are more focused on aging are much more aware that this is a growing um, topic that needs sure. attention. And with, with aging, when we think about aging, we often think about, as we were talking earlier, kind of the, the frail, the, the uh, person in poor health who needs a lot of help and a lot of assistance. Mm -hmm. and, and that definitely is, exists. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole other side of aging which we like to call aging well. Mm -hmm. And I know the, the Institute is very in, interested in exploring that and not only giving us inter, in um, the research and the stats on how people are aging well, but also advice and, and, uh, and methods. Right. Right. Uh, the Institute is a, is a research center at the university, so the faculty there and their graduate students are engaged in um, original research to answer pressing questions mm -hmm. in service provision or health economics or anthropology or occupational therapy. Um, but, but we're also very concerned about the citizens in our neighborhoods. So we provide community education to families mm -hmm. around it, uh, the issues that matter to them, whether it's caregiving, um, maybe downsizing from a large house to yes. a small house in order yes. to manage. So there's a range, a, a, an incredibly broad range right. of topics that are touching healthcare professionals, older adults themselves, um, and and their families. And you're quite right. You know, we used to see the Freedom 55 television commercials yeah. where everyone retired and right. sort of uh, ran back and forth to Florida and went on trips, and people are doing that. You know, healthy older adults. Um, are well and active and want to extend the quality of their years as long as possible. Um, but there's the whole range from people who are fit and active, but also those that are um, meeting challenges related sure. to cognition and, and physical well-being. One of the challenges is coming to the conclusion that we no longer can manage alone. 
in our longtime home, the home that we love. I think and that's going to be tough yeah. when we get there. And um, your that was uh, what the topic of your most recent research was on downsizing. And I found interesting one of the things that you learned was some advice that you could pass on to adult children of the older adults who mm -hmm. determine they need to move on. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you found and um, before you even get into the specifics of the research because I, I think that is uh, very fascinating. Um, general advice to, to those of us who are adult children of, uh, of elderly. Right. I, I'm glad we're, we're starting with the bottom line and then we can work backward to the details of the project. But, you know, to answer your question directly, um, adult children um, probably about our age who have parents in their 70s or, or so and there's a range I, I think it's it's hard it's hard for us to see our our parents losing some of their uh, cognitive abilities and physical abilities it's, it's at a different time doesn't affect everyone but I think we're also dispersed geographically mm -hmm. we're very mm -hmm. busy with our own mm -hmm. careers mm -hmm. our own families our own children mm -hmm. so when we, when we admit and sort of cross that threshold of recognition that, okay, mom has had a few of these difficulties for a while, but now there was this injurious fall. Now the family needs to really think about practicalities. Is the two-story home appropriate um, with a fractured hip or a mild stroke? Um, can mom manage um, the, the chores? the yard, the maintenance, the driving, depending on mm -hmm. the, the health condition that they've sustained or the injury, maybe the house no longer fits. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, the body isn't as um, resilient as the mind or vice versa. So you're looking at options. If the house doesn't fit, can you downsize the house to a house that's more functional. Um, as you know, I'm an occupational therapist, mm -hmm. so I concern mm -hmm. myself uh, with mm -hmm. transfers in and out of the bathroom, in and out of the tub. Is the kitchen uh, and there are, modifiable? There are so sustain? many um, um, resources out there that can help yes. make those rooms, the bathroom and the kitchen, yes. being two of the most important sometimes um, accessible. It's, sometimes it's inexpensive equipment that through uh, uh, an enlightened service provider or yeah. a home visit yeah. or a discharge visit from the hospital can identify in the home, well, what type of bath Right. Seat. There are, by the that way, works. Uh, contractors, remodelers, Absolutely. who are certified as aging in place specialists. Absolutely. And I just want to pause for a minute and mention that I recently had my own bathroom um, remodeled a bit and the, the, the big difference, the big uh, change that we made was simply cutting out the bathtub. Just, just the threshold just area. Just the threshold yeah. so that she could more easily on her bath chair lift her legs yeah. uh, and, and, and get in yeah. directly into the tub. I, I'm glad you mentioned that Henry because there, there's sort of obvious equipment that you might see at, at your local Walgreens and, or home health um, store but sometimes it's actually the specialist who can say, all right, your bathroom is laid out this way, your stroke is on this side, you know, your hemiplegia means your upper body strength on this side is compromised. What if we flip things around? Some, sometimes the modifications can be minor, right. but yield real benefits yeah. functionally. Just make those daily activities easier to... Easier to be independent, yes. safer, yes. and then us, the daughters, don't worry about mom right. when we're not there. Yeah. So there are things we can do, obviously, in our in the homes, in their homes, to make the the living space easier, more manageable, mm -hmm. because that is one of the biggest challenges: is convincing our adult, our, our parents as adult children that maybe it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. What, what advice do you have to those of us who think that the home, even no matter how much renovation or change we make, just isn't going to work anymore? Once, once you make, get to that stage yes. when it's not, not working and yes. everyone knows. Uh, I think one piece of advice is to listen um, as adult children. We're concerned about 
our uh, parents' safety. Mm -hmm. We don't want to fall. We don't want to hear that they were on the floor and were injured and, and help was not there. So I think, I think we might overreact sometimes. We, we hurry. Um, and we want that older adult to make a decision soon. We've reviewed three different options. Just decide. Let's do it. Let's organize the moving van. Let's pack up the possessions. Let's get rid of these possessions. I think it moves too quickly. Um, when someone leaves a long-standing family home, that home, you know, the walls speak to the memories. Every corner, every touch is, is a remembrance of raising children there. Um, there are little white uh, pen, or pencil marks on the wall yes, as yes. the family grew. Um, there's views out the back window over the kitchen where families and neighborhoods shared very wonderful times together. So, you know, from the adult child's point of view, that's not what's in their head. You know, they've got their cell phone and they're trying to make a move for mom. But they really need to move, and I'm saying mom, might be dad, um, you need to move at the pace of the older adult themselves. Sometimes um, that is much slower than, than you might like mm -hmm. as, a, mm -hmm. as an adult caregiver. Um, you also need to know what are the meaningful facets of the home, community, and neighborhood that are the habitual patterns of enjoyment for that older person. Um, the house is one thing, but if they can just zip over and have a game of cards or a coffee down the street in a lovely spot where someone knows your name. Um, that's incredibly meaningful too. So if you're moving location, can you rebuild your social networks your, and your patterns of meeting your daily needs, whether it's groceries, entertainment, shopping, friends, doctor's appointments? It all needs to be regrown in a new place. Not just are you going to be safer there right. or get your medication or, or have just more nutritious meals. Or take the family photos or take some, some things yes. that may make it, uh, that may make it uh, that, easier. That helps. Reproducing the lovely things and taking with you the possessions mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, remind you of beautiful events yep. or special um, gifts, of course, you know, we, we, we want to surround ourselves with beautiful sure. things. Sure. You, you had a great story when we talked about this earlier about one woman who had to make a choice between mm. some, I think it was a sofa mm -hmm. and a piano. She a could grand not, piano. A grand piano. <laughs> she could not fit both into her new smaller downsized space and the family had to make a decision. Tell us about that story. Yes, uh, in downsizing there's the practical and then there's the must-haves that are emotional, yes. but also probably very life-sustaining. You're referring to a music teacher that was in our study. She had never married. She had taught music out of her home for years. When she downsized, she was a practical lady. You know, she was organized. She, she actually anticipated the move and was very involved in selecting where she went. It was, so it was very positive in mm -hmm. that regard. Mm -hmm. But she had one little battle with um, actually one of her music students who, said, who was very practical. You know, you've got to sit. Where are you going to put your couch? Let's get a new couch. In the end, the baby grand piano filled her apartment with some boxes of music and a tiny little stool and no couch. You know, a whole oh bunch my. of practical things did not come. Yes. But it was the right decision for this woman because she played... Um, she had guests in that wanted to listen and yes. play with her. Yes. It worked. That's terrific. I, I love that story. I, I often tell it because I think that is, is one of the issues as adult children we're constantly battling. What's the right thing for mom or dad? What's the logical thing? And, and really what's the right thing for us? Because mm -hmm. we've got to get on with our lives as well. Mm -hmm. um, you were speaking earlier about maybe bringing some of those intangibles, the, the, the view out the window, mm -hmm. um, the, the feeling of, of just the feeling of the long time home. And in your research, you used a term that I thought was really fascinating. Again, it's, I think it was refashioning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the space. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that, please. Sure. Um, 
Refashioning the space is an idea that comes partly out of the design literature, um, but it's being listened to much more attentively now by, by families and rehabilitation professionals like occupational therapists. So in the design world, you know, we're told that certain colors um, are more uplifting or calming, um, and we haven't, we haven't worried about that very much as health professionals. We're more worried about not tripping and falling, removing the scatter rugs, um, but the more um, we understand how people enjoy spaces, how we choose our homes. We, we are attentive to natural light and windows, the importance of sun, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the importance of being able to get outside when we want to mm -hmm. more quickly. So I even in the industry of design of long-term care facilities and assisted living facilities, we see a, a remarkable change over the last 25 years with the light the gardens, mm -hmm. the interior courtyards. Mm -hmm. um, so that structural design has been very important, but also the interior design. Um, and it's complicated, I guess I want to say that. Um, if your mobility has changed remarkably, then you can't just duplicate um, the design of the home that you had that you loved. You actually need to sort of edit Mm -hmm. uh, your loved objects, mm -hmm. but then decide how do I move in my space? Mm -hmm. Maybe my movement in space is much smaller, or maybe I have certain pathways that I travel in my smaller space. Bring your um, inspiring objects and positive remembrances there. Um, everyone knows the front room where the photos of their family <laughs> are. Maybe you want more in the kitchen, more in the, in the bedroom, mm -hmm. or you know, a special object from a special trip with a special someone. Mm -hmm. Bring it closer. Mm -hmm. Pull it out. Use it. It, uh, it reminds me, <clears throat> excuse me, of my mom who would always say, Kathy, you love those special dishes. Use them. Don't, you, don't save them for right. the special occasion. Use it now. Because we haven't quite touched on this, but you're taking me there. As an older adult ages and makes this major household transition, there's a there it's liminal to a finite lifespan and that older adult is much more aware of the finitude of the lifespan and um, ceasing driving moving to a more manageable space accepting more care is moving in one direction toward ultimately needing more and more and until you're entirely dependent. That's not something that we run toward, the older adult or the sure. family member. But it's, um, I think it's important to remember that the older adult is far wiser yes. about where they are in this pathway, and, and thus the attention when needs we, to be there. Um, when we spoke about this the very first time, that I, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought that up. I think you phrased it as this is the the adult the older adult may know or does know that this is probably their last move can be can and be. the adult children are not necessarily looking at it that way they're looking at it as a problem to a, a present solu um, a, a solution to a present problem yes and when they stop and think about this may be mom's very last move mm -hmm. and so I do need to think about whether the piano is more important to her than the than the sofa. Mm -hmm. um, that that is that is a very very that brings the whole thing to a very emotional level mm -hmm. that many of us mm -hmm. are are really not dealing with. But it's, it's hard always to talk there. About. It's, it's hard always to talk underlying. About. Yeah, and it may be the last move. You know, many people have multiple moves. People move out of their large home into a smaller condo. Mm -hmm. um, then they might consider you know, a senior living community where they have some services, but also a lot of activities. So, so I think a lot of people don't realize how many different living options there are. Mm -hmm. Some people will maybe make one or two or three moves in their life mm -hmm. total. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be interesting to see what we boomers do, because we've yes. jumped around the country with different yes. careers, different homes. Homes, I think maybe it will be different for us. I think emotionally it'll be challenging, of course. Well, we know that already the the language is different. We no longer speak of nursing homes. Mm -hmm. We speak of assisted living 
communities mm -hmm. and independent living communities. And there are, as you, you described, some of the features of these, but I've recently read that builders, construction builders of, of homes, are actually building um, granny units, if you will, mm -hmm. the mother-in-law unit, mm -hmm. onto the new home. And thinking of, of uh, very much considering what, what we were speaking about, refashioning the, the, uh, the space that they're leaving and, yeah. and trying to duplicate to the best that they can. I, I, I think we're going to see more options. Um, I, I know of many families who are um, bringing back uh, college kids for a couple of yes. years while they're in between employment or another degree. Um, you know, some older adults are in these huge homes and maybe they have a son that was laid off in the auto sector. And why not put the two households together? Economically, it's smart. Um, socially, it's even smarter. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a very interesting time of recombination and experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, there are, um, you know, uh, older adults who do not have children. Um, this is much more common than it used to be 30, 40, 50 years ago. So if you're a childless couple, it's most likely that the older woman because she's living longer than her husband, she's going to survive 15 to 20 years on average after her husband passes away. That's the national average right now to be a widow. Maybe she wants to pair up with a friend mm -hmm. and they look about sharing a unit, um, having some fun together at the same time. Sure. One person drives, the other person doesn't. So I, th I think it's it's going to be an interesting time of new compositions of households, yes. and that's a good thing. And, and really requiring creativity, as yes. you said, people pairing up. In, before mm -hmm. families make the decision or choose the assisted living, the independent living, or the, um, the, the medical facility, if mm -hmm. that's what's needed, we talked about slowing down and maybe coming to a different, uh, a different option at the, um, um, it, just in the interim. Mm -hmm. What are some of the options? Um, making their own home, as we talked about, maybe more manageable, mm -hmm. um, getting some, some type of assistance and, and uh, bringing in, uh, calling on relatives and friends and family, but um, what are some of the other options that they may be able to? Uh, old, older adults themselves say they want to stay in the home they're in, if at all possible, for as long as possible. So I think that needs to be respected, and I think there are ways of bringing the services into the home. Um, there are a range of supports. It could be housekeeping support, could be yard support, but it can also be nursing support, um, cooking support, medication support, physical therapy and occupational therapy in the home. Yeah. Uh, this is so much more positive. Yeah. And it allows the older adult to maintain their social and community network and age in place how they want to. Yeah. So to, I would urge families to explore those options. To really give them peace of mind. Believe it or not, we only have five minutes left. Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably four by now. Um, talk what's coming, uh, maybe, um, some of the, uh, the future research. What's coming next uh, from the IOG? Oh my goodness, um, many projects in many areas. Um, there is mental health research going on in our hallways to um, expand the uh, assessment and treatment techniques of clinicians to identify uh, cognitive impairment in older adults who are so leaving hospital. So let me stop you there and ask you to Tell us what that means in, oh. lay, in layperson's terms. All right. Uh, well, we, we have uh, 11 faculty at the Institute, and they come from various backgrounds, social sciences, health sciences, et cetera. So mm -hmm. if there's a topic in aging that's important, we're studying it. Mm -hmm. um, cognitive impairment um, and the inability to make decisions and be oriented to space and time mm -hmm. can sometimes be a temporary transient mm -hmm. occurrence mm -hmm. that's a result of physical trauma, a fall for example, or mm -hmm. an anesthetic for a surgery. Mm -hmm. so, so there's work being done to try to understand how to appreciate the moment, 
but plan longer term. So there's healthcare research being done. Okay. There's a healthy aging brain research going on at the institute. There's economics research. So uh, I, I, I think in four minutes I couldn't tell you everything, <laughs> but yeah. we're very excited yeah. to be contributing to science and the community. Yeah. I'm, um, when, when I go to your website, aging well is, is one of the uh, themes that continues to, um, to pop up on, on the screen. And as we started the, the, the uh, half hour talking about, there's really, when we think of aging, we think of older and, and not so well ill, but mm -hmm. we also think of aging A active well. Active and engaged as well. Yeah. yeah, yes, very much so. Well, Kathy, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. We, um, we know that downsizing is, is something that many, many people, maybe a majority, um, are, uh, are considering, considering yeah. and when they do so, they, they have options. So with that, um, that that's really um, important to know. Um, with regard to our, our, our show, Aging Well in America, it is a new show, and I would like to invite the community, those who work in the aging industry, if you will, in the community, to contact us here at the War Memorial and do send in your ideas for future shows and uh, topics that we can address. We're doing a lot in the world, in the, in the country, and as we just discovered, in the community itself. And there is um, a lot of good work going on in the Gross Points and Harper Woods and really um, the, the entire southeastern Michigan area. So we would invite you to bring um, all of your ideas to us so that we can explore them and have discussions as we are having here today. Thank you.